Hi there. Hello. So, for uh, any of you who haven't come across me and John before, every month or so we um, get together, play each other some music, and now we're going to talk about it. <laughs> so, right. we're going to kick off with uh, a track from the Jeff Beck Blow by Blow album. Um, we listened to Thelonious, which um, you can see that. I mean, this was the George Martin produced uh, Jeff Beck album from the early 70s, I think. Mm. Um, and this track is written by Stevie Wonder and features Stevie on clavinet. And uh, yeah, very strong, fusiony, funky tune. Two, two kind of essential Jeff Beck albums, I think, Blow by Blow and Wires. And yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah. Good. Very good. What did we follow that up with, John? Followed it up with um, Ronnie Laws. With his, um, I think, what was his only album for Blue Note? I think he was Hubert. Was he Hubert's brother, Ronnie Laws? I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. Don't know. And is Deborah involved? Maybe. Could easily be. Deborah yeah, Laws maybe. features Fran later on in the video. Deborah Laws is definitely Hubert's brother, I think. Hubert's sister, rather. Ah. So I played the track Tidal Wave off, off this album. It was, kind, it was kind of like, um, it was during the period when Liberty had taken over Blue Note. Um, I played the track Tidal Wave, which um, Ronnie Laws is a sax player. Um, also features Wilton Felder on bass on this track. Yeah, just a kind of classic kind of jazz funk track, really. And yeah. worth mentioning the Blue Note film. Yeah, it's very good. Called behind, is it called Behind the Notes? I can't remember what the film's called. Oh, but sure. It's about an hour and a half. That's yeah, that much worth, I know. worth seeing. There's two, actually. There's also one called Dudget Schwing as well, which is um, based oh, on right. which is around at the same time. Kind of all right. No real revelations, but worth seeing, definitely. Um, this is a, a recent recent reissue of a 1975 Blue Note album. This, um, as anybody who watches our channel will know, we're, we're big Bobby Hutchison mm. fans. And this is the track, uh, this is the album called Montara, actually released in 75. Um, very strong sort of Latin influence uh, on this album. Just great playing. Um, and some, I mean, lots of people who I don't know, but obviously the, the classics like um, Harvey Mason, Willie Bobo, Ralph McDonald, all featured, as well as a, a lot of, um, lot of uh, Latin musicians. Mm. But yeah, great stuff. We listened to Camel Rise. A lot of marimba on it as well, isn't it? Yes. Because, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So those vibes. Um, yeah. So I'm then moved over to um, Arthur Blythe, who's an alto saxophone player. We showed his um, records before on the session, but he ran, did a string of really, really good albums for CBS and Columbia Records in America um, during the late 70s, early 80s. And um, this was from his album called Elaborations, and it's a really nice track called Lower Nile, which has got a very nice kind of groove to it. Very unusual band, no bass, Arthur on alto saxophone, Bobby Battle on drums, Kelvin Bell on guitar, Bob Stewart on tuba, which plays the kind of bass role, and Abdul mm. Wadu on cello. Um, Really recommend, there's a four or five of his records on Columbia, and you can buy them so cheaply, actually. I mean, they're available for almost nothing. Definitely worth picking up, Arthur Blythe. Really great. Really underrated. I've got that album, and I hadn't, I hadn't heard that track for a very long time. Really, just very fresh, very, very original fresh sound. Um, yeah, so I, I some more Arthur Blythe. This is, I think this is the first Arthur Blythe album I bought, which is um, Lennox Avenue Breakdown. £4.50 from Record Tape Exchange from Notting Hill Gate, I notice. Um, we listened to the track called Down San Diego Way, which, yeah, if, you've, if you don't know this tune, it's, it's a, a slab of pure musical ecstasy. Mm. It's got some incredible drumming from Jack to Jeanette, some really funky guitar playing from James Blood Ulmer, Cecil McBee's on the bass, and James Newton is on the flute. And um, actually, there's there's um, tuba as that as well. Yeah, Bob Stewart's on Bob as well. Stewart, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, R uh, just such a dis I mean, uh, as soon as John played about two, two seconds, seconds of that, <laughs> I knew it was Arthur Blythe. I think a, a really, really um, important and underrated sax player. It's very influential, but kind of not known, not really known that much by the public. I think. No. Um, so went for, um, from Arthur Blythe to, we had a break then actually, we went out and watched the, the Fabish Fabish Carnival. Carnival go past, <laughs> which is, I tell you, Bahia and Nottingham. <laughs> um, this is a record by Lewis Maholo, 
who's a South African drummer, had spent a long time living in London in the 70s. And this has just been reissued. This is the original, but this has been just been reissued by, by Cafe Oto Records, a limited edition on vinyl. Absolute classic record. South African township influenced jazz, but with a lot of free kind of jazz elements to it. And he played the track called Kanya Afo Ukona, I think you pronounce it. And featuring Favisham's most famous saxophone. Yeah, featuring a phenomenal saxophone solo by Evan Parker, where he yeah. sounds like he's almost speaking in tongues on it. Absolutely. But this is... Sounds like a pig squealing, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> This, for me, is one of the absolute best UK jazz records ever, actually. And I was lucky enough to put this band on a couple of times in the late 70s, and they are fantastic. So pick it up before it goes. Send me a thousand copies on, 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 um, on Cafe Oto. This mm. is my home spirits to Joyce. Mm. Now, this is a, an interesting bit of synchronicity. After the last session John and I had together, we went off to a, a record fair in Whitstable. And apparently, unbeknownst to me, John actually bought this album but with a different cover. And in mono. And in mono. <laughs> then took it out of his box because he thought he'd played it at the session when he hadn't. And <laughs> in between, I actually ended up buying it. This is um, another of the uh, Stan Getz albums that features Chick Corea. Um, this one's called Sweet Rain. What, <clears throat> the other one's Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel, which yeah. is, yeah. Both, both amazing mm -hmm. records. I, this, this one in particular just sounds incredible. Um, it's got um, Grady Tate and Ron Carter as the rhythm section, Chick Corea on the piano. And yeah, highly, highly recommended. Really, really so you nice have a Snoopy album. sticker on there. I've got a Snoopy sticker on there. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, from uh, Evan Parker to Stan Getz. And then yet another bit of synchronicity was I, I was kind of looking around for a vinyl copy of, <laughs> of um, Seven Steps to Heaven. Suddenly I thought I had one, but I hadn't got one. And went on um, Amazon and found a mispriced copy of Seven Steps to Heaven, the analogue um, pressing of it. The press uh, done by, I think it was done by Steve Hoffman and, um, no, by Ryan Smith at Sterling Sound, but a fantastic pressing of, um, of Seven Steps to Heaven, which was a kind of transitional album. It was just before he set up the, um, the, the quintet with um, Wayne Shorter. And um, this one featured, I played the track actually that features Victor Feldman on piano, who's a UK pianist, and uh, Frank Butler on drums, and played the track Bass and Street Views off this. Really great sounding record, actually. Great yeah. playing from Miles as well. And this was also an album that since the last session I'd bought yes. and, and had in my pile to play. <laughs> oh, no. So there yeah. we are. So we're don't know taste, what's going on. Tastes are completely converging. Yeah. They are. Um, it was then time for some Duke Ellington, and this is from the album The Ellington Suites. Um, we listened to the first part <clears throat> of the Queen's Suite, which is on side one, which is Sunset and the Mockingbird. And this was um, a suite that Duke Ellington wrote in response to meeting the UK Queen, apparently, in the late 50s. Um, was recorded in 1972, I think. Or, yeah. Oh, no. Hang on, not at all. So it's recorded in 1959. Mm. That's right. Easy, That's right, uh, but it's twinned with something else called the uh, Guvatalis Suite, which is on the other side, which was recorded in the early 70s. Anyway, neither of these were supposed to be released until after Duke's death, which I think is what happened. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, really just beautiful arrangements, um, beautiful, just sort of sounded like the music was breathing, uh, the arrangements. Really, if you don't know that this piece of music, really recommend listening to it and appreciating the mastery of Duke Ellington. Almost taken for granted, but he's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a break and then we came back and uh, um, played um, Mary Shut the Garden Door off, um, off the vinyl version of, um, of Donald Fagan's Morph the Cat. And a friend of mine who recently moved to, a very good friend of mine who moved, who moved to Los Angeles, had asked me as a joke what record, what a record I particularly coveted, and I talked about the box set of, of all the Donald Fagan on vinyl, which is including all the latest masterings. And about three weeks after she arrived in the States, the whole box arrived from Amoeba, actually, of all of them. <laughs> and this is a fantastic sounding record. I mean, it's oh, unfortunately really incredibly expensive to buy now, but really, really, I mean, and um, I mean, the CD sounded pretty good, but this sounded really rich and with the Ray Freddie sound. Washington on the Freddie bass. Freddie Washington on the bass and so forth. But also a really good late Donald Fagan record, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, really, really nice. But the box sets 
actually the box set's almost, although it costs about 90 quid, it's almost worth buying. Just to buy this alone costs about 80 quid. So you get all the other ones as well. Mm. Um, mm. The, the connection was a Freddie Washington on the base. And um, again, anybody who watches our channel will know we're big Patrice Russian fans. Um, although we played a track from the album Straight From The Heart, which doesn't feature Ready Freddy, we listened to Remind Me. Very nice, sort of sultry, understated, grooving tune. And um, yeah, Patrice really just somehow moving from, you know, some quite out there jazz fusion to a very sort of soulful dance sound, but in no way seeming to uh, be compromising her integrity. It's kind of really, really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Just to keep on the Patrice theme, uh, this is something I really did not need to buy. So I had every track on this on the other records, but I kind of quite like quite like that. I also got this in ridiculously cheap as well somewhere. This is the triple album um, um, vinyl set of um, basically a selection of all Patrice Russian's tracks from Elektra. Really nice selection actually on Strut Records. Nicely put together, nice notes and so forth as well. And played the track Look Up, the long version of Look Up from this actually. But so if you've not got any Patrice records, I mean you can pick up her stuff pretty cheaply anyway, but this is also worth getting this set actually. Especially if you only pay 15 quid. Plus 15 quid for it, yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I seem to have been very lucky over the last couple of months of picking things yes, up incredibly cheaply. Absolutely. And it's, it's called, so this is, the section is called Remind Me and it's on Strut Records in the UK and I think it's available in the States as well. Sure it is actually. So we're, we're kind of inhabiting the uh, late 70s, early 80s period and. Um, making a connection with um, John's earlier playing of the Ronnie Laws track. This is, we imagine, his sister, Deborah Laws. It's actually the tracks by Ronnie Laws, I notice, called On My Own on the Electra record label. Just a, a classic bit of um, early 80s jazz funk, really. Some very nice slap bass playing. And, uh, yeah. Um, tribute time. We lost, in the last couple of months since we last did a video, Pedro Bell. The artist who did all of the, um, a whole, not all of them actually, but a run of Funkadelic sleeves during the mid to late 70s. Absolute classic cartoon style covers. And it's always a good excuse to play some Funkadelic. So I played the track How Do You View You, which is kind of a bit of a hidden away on the side mm. too of, um, of Tales of Kid Funkadelic, which was, I think was their last one on Westbound before they moved to. Um, Warner Brothers, a really nice track actually. Some mm. great Bernie Worrell on it as well, actually. And great George and Gary Scheider. Yeah, great vocals. singing. Yeah, vocals and so forth as well. But anyway, great. I mean, I spent hours staring at these Pedro Bell covers. Yes, so did I. Think, <laughs> so, yeah, very sad <laughs> loss actually. He was an important part of album art. I yeah. Um, another, another tribute was to um, Malcolm Molly Duncan, who was the tenor sax player with the Average White Band, who died last week. Um, and we listened from their Arif Mardin produced album in, gosh, 19, 1974, amazing. It's the first album, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, person to person. Just a really fantastically funky, stripped down, simple, grooving track. Yeah. Very good stuff. Um, then we moved to, I've all been, Years and years ago, I heard this track by a band called Open Sky Unit, who are a Belgian band with a, with an American singer whose name completely escapes me now. A track called Sunshine Star, and I've been looking for it for years and years and years, and it's kind of popped up in a few kind of bootleg compilations, and um, finally found this actually for again for a very little money. I seem to be very lucky in the last couple of months, and this is actually a, this is actually a kind of um, promo seed, a promo piece of vinyl for an album called Velvet Voodoo. And it's a great track, really soulful singing, mm. kind of mid-tempo, two kind of quite an unusual lineup. It sounds like it's almost two saxophones, keyboards, and drums, basically, and that's it. And, and it's live. And it's live as well. Mm. Very sunny, kind of interesting, almost reminds me a little bit of kind of Gary Bart's I've Known Rivers kind of style mm. thing to it as well. Mm. But really good. So if you get a chance to find Open Sky Unit Sunshine Star, Pick it's it very, up. very good. It's also, also there's, it's on YouTube, so you can have a listen to it on there as well. I'll also be playing it on the next All Points show. Yeah, very good. Which, um, I, as ever, will stick a link. Anybody who likes the sounds of the kind of music we play, I'm doing a, a weekly radio show which you can listen to live online or listen again later. 
and I will also be probably playing a selection from this, which is um, a new to me Armand Jamal album called Jamalka, um, which is on the Pi record label, which is a UK label. Um, and we listened to the Foster Silvers uh, track Misdemeanor, written by Leon F. Silvers III, um, which is a kind of a kind of bit of a rare groove classic. And given it's kind of quite lush, lushly produced, but again some fantastic um, electric piano playing from Ahmed Jamal. And um, yeah, this is quite hard to find this record, so I'm mm. delighted to discover this. Came out in America as the 20th century records, I think, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. And the, the bass there was Richard Evans, who was the big chess arranger, as the other one as well ah. as Charles Stephanie. Really interesting. Mm. Then we must have had a break, because we moved into a completely different zone again. <laughs> and uh, there's a new Wilco album out called Ode to Joy, which is... Um, which I think is slightly tongue in cheek because it's yes. actually quite a, it's quite a dark <laughs> record actually. I mean, really, but with as with the Wilco stuff, dark, but there also some optimistic kind of um, undertones as well. But it's that way round rather than optimistic with dark undertones. Really, a lot more kind of attention to production than the last couple of um, records. Um, interesting sounds, very interesting drum sound on it. They, the conventional kit is pretty much disposed with and wooden blocks were used quite on quite a lot of tracks. And I played the track Love Is Everywhere Beware. I think I played that track anyway. Okay. But really, I'm just getting to, it's only just arrived this one, so just getting stuck into it. But as, as usual, for me, still one of the most interesting kind of rock bands, really. Mm. It's sounding very Beatlesy, I thought, very which Beatles which gave me the excuse to play um, a track from the, the newly, uh, the new mix, I guess, really, um, Abbey Road, Giles Martin um, mixed version of the Beatles. Um, actually, I have to say, I, it wasn't hugely impressing with the sound of it yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. I've got, you know, my mum had a copy of this when it came out from 1969. I mean, obviously, my, my other copy is, is, uh, is very, very overplayed. Um, I've listened to other tunes that sounded better. The actual version of I Want You wasn't sounding as heavy as I wanted it to sound. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a great album. And if you, if you don't have a copy, there's nothing wrong with buying a copy of this. No, at all. It's, it's, it is radically different, I think, because I played it back, I similarly, I got an old copy of it, played it back to and it sounded very different, mm. actually, some tracks. It's definitely more bass. Yeah, but less drums. And I, I was, yeah. So, I'd, not really, I think heavy guitar playing just made me think of Frank Zappa, as it often mm. does. And um, I played the track Zooter Laws, which is the title track off Zooter Laws, which is kind of... Um, Kind of not my favourite Zapper album. That it's got two or three classic guitar tracks on it, but it's kind of starting to get to the period where I started to lose interest a bit in Frank. Actually, and of course the cover includes people, most of the people on the cover are not on the album at all, which is <laughs> not unusual for Frank. But a great tune, great guitar playing on it, and kind of um, yeah, and a fantastic amazing, sound, amazing course. sound. I mean, I think we said this before at sessions, but the job that um, that. Um, been done remastering these Zapper albums for really not a lot of money as well as classic really. Yeah. Um, I think a shout out to the Psych <clears throat> in the Valley channel um, who was showing this album which is Yabby You. It's the Pressure Sounds uh, release of Walls of Jerusalem which also features um, a whole extra side of um, unreleased mixes and outtakes it's the yabby you meets king tubby sound and i guess in a way for me the only other producer who comes close to that sort of uh, lee perry arc sound is mm. uh, is king tubby very mystical very spiritual kind of really laced with a sort of lovely kind of jazz tinges sparkling mm. spiritual sounds we listened to walls of jerusalem it sounded really good this is Yabby you also known as the Jesus Dread, and um, pretty much anything with his name on is worth listening to. Yeah, that was my standout the evening, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah, definitely. Mm. definitely. Definitely. And then, unforgivably, I played a few CDs after this, actually. <laughs> Not alone. Not I forgive you, John. And played, I've been wanting to play this for a long time. This is by Phil Coran and the Artistic Heritage Ensemble. Phil Coran was a legendary figure in, in Chicago and was a was a key player in early development of Sun Ra, played with Sun Ra. Also influenced a whole load of people, like a lot of people from Earth, Wind and Fire played in his band. Pete Cozy, from, who went on to play with um, 
Miles played in his band as well and played the track. I will say he, he was the first person to to um, to use an electric kalimba, which of course went on to be part of um, part of Maurice White's Armory, mm. the, the in the past. So this is a bit of kind of cultural history, really. And I played the track off this called Francophone Blues, which is featuring the electrified kalimba sound. But he's a kind of pivotal figure, worth looking him up and just reading about him actually, because he was kind of like one of those characters that. Was um, yeah, it was pivotal with a lot of things. That's full co -rant. Also had six sons who comprised yeah. the Heritage Brass Ensemble. Yeah, I think they're called. that's right. They're, that's or something like sound that. very close to it. Yeah, yes, I yeah. can't remember exactly what the name is, but but there's yeah. some very nice bits of YouTube clips of him doing workshops and so forth. Yeah. Well, and time for another tribute. Um, this time to Ginger Baker. This is the Ginger Baker Air Force Two album. Really love the cover on this. Um, this is an album. I think, you know, this is post, post Blind Faith and pre um, heading off to um, Ghana and then Nigeria and hooking up with Fadakuti. Um, and we listened to the track called, uh -huh, where is it? The first track on side one, Let Me Ride, which um, also features organ and lead vocal from Graham Bond. Um, Oh, and I noticed Denny Lane actually on guitar mm. and vocals as well. And I, I mean, not a brilliant album, but this track I thought just had, it was, somehow it also really worked well after the Phil Coe. It run. did, yeah. It was there fun. was something about the sort of, the, the, the freedom and spiritual expression. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Ginger Baker, uh, quite a force to be reckoned with. Definitely. Definitely. I'm not sure what the connection was with JJ Kale. <laughs> I think it, I, I think it was the, the fact there was a kind of quite a lot of brass on that as well, actually. Right. And um, we've been featuring JJ Kale records quite a lot in the last few sessions. And, and just a reminder that they're all good. Actually, the yeah. first eight are all good. And I played right down here off. I think this was a third album, really. I think second or third album he did. Quite. I think quite an early one. Yeah. I definitely remember. My... Recorded the Muscle Shoals. What's interesting about this record is almost every track has a completely different lineup on it, but there's new, you know the whole album sounds like a like one actually. So JJ Kelly can't go wrong. Again, you don't have to pay very much to get hold of his albums They're all over the place. This next album I seem to remember I did pay quite a bit for. <laughs> it looks like you paid. Or <laughs> well, three three and a half thousand yen, which is not very much money actually. No, uh, this is the Street Noise album from 1969 featuring. Judy Driscoll, Brian Auger, and the Trinity. Really rather, rather lovely um, reissue. And we listened to Tropic of Capricorn, which is a Brian Auger pen tune with some extremely um, exciting organ work going on. Um, yeah. Excitable organ work, I think. Excitable. Yeah. And exciting. And exciting, yeah. Well, I was quite excited. Yeah, no, definitely. But also, it sounded like it was kind of. He was pretty excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so at, the, at the risk of getting struck off the PC, I played another CD after this, which was, um, I think it was the keyboard playing on that last one, which is a Les McCann album called Layers, which I have been looking for. I don't know, Mark has as well, on vinyl mm. for a very long time. Not finding it. Not finding it. And it came out on Atlantic originally, and, and produced by um, Joel Dawn, um, who produced a lot of period. And it's a kind of really interesting record. It's with Les playing a lot of keyboards and a lot of very early kind of modular synths and so forth with... Um, with the rhythm section mostly, and it's just an interesting record. It's completely different to anything else he recorded, really, and also just kind of. F I can't think of anything else that sounds like it from its time. Actually, it's really no, unusual. I don't. Record. I don't know the album well enough, but that. Yeah, really, good. really, but it's a really. I and mean, this is the reissue that came out on the uh, oldies um, CD version. But I'm, yeah, I'm still looking for the vinyl of this. And played mm. the track Harlem Buck Street Dance, which is a great track off here as well. Hmm. Um, well, big shout out to Bobby Jane Gardner, yeah. who some of you will remember featured in a, a video about this time last year where she was introducing her VC music project, which has in fact um, all happened. And I will put a link to the amazing video of the track that was produced as a collaborative effort with Bobby, myself and a number of VC members, kind of quite a remarkable thing to have achieved. Anyway, this is the last album Bobby um, put out, mm. which was her Forwards album project, where she worked for about a year and a half across different uh, parts and wards of Birmingham and worked with 
local people and Birmingham composers to create a whole double album of collaborations. And we listened to one of Bobby's uh, pieces, which was in collaboration with the Manningford Hall Elders Lunch Group and the students of the Billersley Primary School called Walking Down a Billersley Street. Sounds great. It does. Very nice pressing. Um, also, for metal fans, it also includes Justin Broderick on it as well, who a lot of people would know from his, his metal work as well. And also, for I don't know, Pram are kind of quite out there. Yeah, I think quite definitely. a few people know Pram as well. So, yeah, check it out. The album is called 10 Districts, 40 Wards, 10 Composers, 40 Community, gr community Groups, 10 Performers. <clears throat> Performances over two years, four wards. It's also worth mentioning that Derek Higgins, who I know a lot of people subscribe to, and he's almost like the father of the VC in a way as well. He did a very long uh, piece on, on, on Bobby's thing on his own. Yes. Video, so, which is very nice. Yeah. So from children in kind of Birmingham streets to Charlton streets, and played a track off the Sam D's record, The Show Must Go On. I've just finished reading. Mark, I think, at the last session talked about Stuart Cosgrove's books on, um, on Memphis and Detroit and just finished reading the Harlem book. And Stuart, at any opportunity, calls this the best soul record ever made, actually, which I think might be a bit of an over statement. I think, think it's, a, it's a good one, but yeah. and played the track show, but it's a great record, actually, and has been reissued. This is original, but it has been reissued now as well. Played the track child of the streets. Um, and we were feeling soulful at this stage. We need to be a bit soulful at the moment. And um, this is the Tony, Tony, Tony album, my first CD choice. This is very hard to find on vinyl. Apparently it only exists as a double vinyl promo copy with a kind of white label. Um, we listened to the track Loving You, which has some really lovely bass playing from Raphael Sadiq. And just actually a reminder of what a talent he mm. is and whatever, whether it's Lucy Pearl under his own name, Tony, 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 collaborating with D'Angelo, whoever. What, a, what, a, what an artist. And his new album, which is not yet out, ah, which, which is ordered. called. It's out digitally, but I think I've, I've got the vinyl ordered. I've got the vinyl ordered. Yeah, so next session we'll play it. Next session. Yeah, definitely. Very good record. Just and uh, another CD, I'm afraid here as well. But we were thinking about artists who are under underrated, and this never came. Certainly never came out on vinyl. This is um, Chocolate Genius, who we've talked about before, actually on um, on the on our on our sessions. And played the track Love, which is off his third, second album called God Music, um, which came out on, on V2. Um, again, kind of classic, kind of, well not classic actually, kind of very soulful, unknown vocalist really, mm. actually a really interesting artist. Just very original. Yeah. I think. Um, I think I might have shown this album earlier in the year when it came out. This is the double album of unreleased or not put together in this order. Uh, Marvin Gaye tracks, not as was publicised, the missing link between um, what's going on and whatever came after that, but um, kind of slightly built around the track You're the Man, which mm. um, is a brilliant tune. But we listened to a Mizell Brothers uh, produced tune called Where Are We Going, which sounded great. Just the sweet, soulful tones of Marvin, just you can never have too much of that. Particularly all the tracks were actually recorded at the Let's Get It On sessions, oh, actually. So, right. I mean, which is, there's a lot of mistakes in the sleeve notes in that, which is quite surprising. Really. Mm. So, from Marvin to Frankie Beverly and Mays, I mean, just kind of... Seamless. Just, seamless, really. Kind of somebody who's massively influenced by Marvin, but kind of a band that just, that, that um, Mark described very well as almost been like the Grateful Dead of soul music. <laughs> <in> the <different laughs> song. They're still playing great sets now, um, which the Grateful Dead aren't, of course, but... And played the track, play the track um, while I'm alone off this, which is a kind of classic, kind of almost trying to catch the last bit of summer feeling before mm, summer disappears. Love the tune. But May's just great. They're almost like an old friend. Yeah, yeah. Really um, I played um, Highways of Your Life from Three Plus Three Isley Brothers. I was telling John this is my fourth copy of this. I'm desperately trying to find a decent pressing of it, and I think I, I would keep buying the same kind of UK press and they're mm. all not very good but um, what a great album and I just really love that tune love love the uh, the vocals on that I should have said I shouldn't have said to you last night but I checked out 
Discogs. I've actually got two copies of that, so I better check what my you've second, got two copies. Yeah, I better check what uh -huh. my second copy is, is like. Actually, mm. so complete kind of U-turn really for the last one, and my, not yet another CD. Uh, Robert Hunter, the lyricist of the Grateful Dead, died a few weeks ago, and um, kind of the Grateful Dead. Although we haven't played much Grateful Dead at the sessions, I know I know other people like Roger Coleman are, are kind of deadheads in retirement or in, in suspension at the moment as well but wanted to play the track Stella Blue off, off this which is the Dix Picks volume 7 and also it's 45 years ago since I was at the gig where this was recorded as well which is kind of yeah, slightly very spooky. good for your age Jack. very good for my <laughs> age and just a great songwriter really really intelligent guy I mean so many great songs with you know of American Beauty and Working Man's Dead and also after that as well doing the period after so yeah great songwriter big loss mm. And that is all, folks. So, um, as ever, we love hearing <coughs> that you watch and enjoy stuff. And if you have any questions or want to chat with us, always good to hear from you. Listen in to the uh, All Points show. Watch Bobby's video. See you next time. And I'm thinking of sticking a playlist up as well. The other ah, thing, which yes. I thought people might like. Yes. If they didn't catch what we were saying when we were when we were on the video itself. So, um, nice. I might, I'll probably, that won't go up immediately, but it'll go up probably few hours after the video goes up. Brilliant. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>